Welcome to Yagba's Epic Tales. The title of today's story is The Prince Who Loved a Pregnant Mad Woman. Once upon a time in a small village, there was a known young mad woman who was constantly at the route to the market square. Nobody could tell where she came from. Many months ago, the mad woman had shown up in the village. The people of the village tried to chase her away several times, but every time they did, she will return to the village again a day or two later. Few of the villagers who were kind enough to always give her food discovered that whenever they extend this gesture of kindness towards her, there was always something good that they experienced. And soon, the news of her good luck charm spread. The villagers decided to let her remain in the village. The king of the village, King Ekpenyong, had two sons, Prince Anyekan, who is the first, and Prince Mbotidem, the second. The two princes were born by different women. Prince Anyekan's mother was late. However, Prince Ubotidem's mother, Queen Adia, was very much alive. It is known by the old village that Prince Anyekan would be the next king after his father. But Queen Adia does not want this. She sought for ways she could make her own son be king instead of Prince Anyekan. She tried to convince some few chiefs she thought could help her, but it was impossible according to them. At last, she found a perfect plan. One weekend, whilst the king went to the mother clan for the gathering of kings, Queen Adia visited her maternal uncle in her maternal village, who is a juju man. Days later, Queen Adia, with the help of two palace guards whom she had paid, added the medicine she got from her uncle in Prince Anyekan's food. They also found a way to give the medicine to the village mad woman. King Ekpenyong was speechless and shattered when he saw his son and the mad woman on the bed naked. For he did love his first son so much and had not hesitated to show it, especially after the death of his first wife. The news of the shameful and abominable sight witnessed by all the chiefs and every other person in the palace soon spread throughout the village. Many people who loved Prince Anyekan, just like the king, were also sad and disappointed. In the village, it is a taboo for a king or a future king to marry or to be intimate with someone who is not from their village. It is also a great taboo to forcefully get intimate with a maiden, let alone a mad woman. King Ekpenyong, though he was deeply hurt, had to disown his son and stripped him of his title as the future king, as demanded by their custom. Queen Adia was happy and fulfilled. It was a perfect plan. She rejoiced because no one now stands in the way of her son, Prince Ubotidem, of becoming king. A month after the incident, the villagers noticed that the mad woman's stomach started swelling. Could Prince Anyekan had gotten her pregnant? Prince Anyekan moved to an old abandoned hut in the outskirts of the village. No one believed him when he told them that he had had nothing to do with the mad woman. Everyone considered him cursed. His two closest friends he had hoped would believe him and helped him also avoided him. Soon, it was confirmed that the mad woman was pregnant. Some of the villagers pitied her and gave her more food, while some seized it as a way for them to keep attracting a good luck. Prince Anyekan, 
Now, all alone, ate only fruits he was able to get from the bushes. One evening, whilst he was outside the old hut that had now become his home, the madwoman showed up with a bowl of food for him. Prince Anyekan, angry at her for being part of his misfortune, chased her away. But the next day, the madwoman came again with another bowl of food. This went on for a week, and every time, Prince Anyekan would chase her away. But the madwoman kept coming back. Prince Anyekan got tired of chasing her. He also realized that the food she brought were good and well prepared. Soon, she became a company for him as he had not been able to speak with anyone for a very long time. He noticed that she was always attentive and responds calmly whenever he spoke to her. And soon, they became friends. Every day, the mad woman would take whatever food that was given to her by the villagers to Prince Anyekan. This went on for many, many months and Prince Anyekan started growing fond of her and looked forward to seeing her every day. The mad woman remained pregnant and the villagers wondered why she had not delivered all this while. Meanwhile, King Ekpeyong had fallen ill and now bedridden as a result of the outbreak from losing his beloved son. Whilst the chiefs and elders of the palace sought for solution to the king's health, a sudden thick darkness fell on the palace. Every other part of the village was bright except for the palace. The elders and chiefs intensified their search for a solution to the mysterious happenings in the palace and were finally able to get a strong chief priest from the village of the mother clan. The chief priest told them that some people in the palace had done a great evil to two innocent souls and until they confess, they will continue to experience the darkness and everyone involved will eventually die a painful death. In Emesit, one of the guards whom Queen Adia had paid to help her carry out her evil deeds spoke up out of fear. He told them how they were able to implicate Prince Anyekan by putting a medicine in his food and that of the mad woman's food and had secretly brought the mad woman into the palace as they were instructed by Queen Adia. Queen Adia, after much denial, eventually admitted to the crime. The elders went to bring Prince Anyekan back to the palace. However, as he was about leaving, the mad woman started crying and insisted that she wants to go with him. Prince Anyekan, because of the soft spot he now has for her, pleaded that they allow her come with them. When they got to the palace, the mad woman suddenly fell and screamed. Then a swollen stomach disappeared. Everyone was confused and afraid. But when the mad woman woke up, she was now okay, sane, and no longer mad. Queen Hadia confessed that she had added an additional medicine to the mad woman's food, which made her stomach swell, so that everyone would believe that Prince Anyekan had gotten the mad woman pregnant. The formerly mad woman told everyone that her name was Idara. She told them that she was from this village. Idara's mother had left the village for her maiden village many years ago with her daughter after the death of her husband. But when Idara grew into a full woman years later, an evil old juju man had sought to marry her, which Idara and her mother refused to. The juju man killed Idara's mother and made Idara mad as Idara fled the village for her paternal village. It is this same juju man who is Queen Adia's uncle and who had given her the evil medicine for her evil deeds. 
Queen Adia, alongside her cohorts, were banished from the village. Queen Adia went to her maternal village to meet her uncle, but realized that he had died mysteriously a few days earlier. Queen Adia, shocked at the news of the mysterious death of her uncle, slumped and also died. King Ekpeyong became well and passed the mantle of kingship to his son, Prince Anyekan, and his queen, Idara. Indeed, evil does not last forever, and every evil deed will be brought to light someday. The end. I hope you enjoyed the story. Did you learn anything from the story? I would like to know. Please share in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. See you in our next video. Bye.